Evanston's warming station is looking for volunteers to help make sure no one is left out in the cold at night. Perhaps the coldest night so far of this fall and winter season ahead. We'll talk about the low temperatures coming up. Coming up in sports, the Matt Glover era is officially begun at Piedmont. We also preview all the basketball action for tonight. EAN Local News starts now. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Waldrop Manufacturing, metal buildings made right here in Calhoun County. Hi, we're glad you could join us. I'm Katie Edwards. And I'm Mike Stedham. The city of Anniston opened its public warming station at the bridge at Anniston's First United Methodist Church this week to give shelter to those who need it during the current cold spell. The bridge opens every afternoon at 5 and closes the next morning at 8. The schedule will remain in effect through Thursday when nighttime temperatures are expected to rise. On Wednesday, the shelter will open at 6 p.m. Shelter officials say volunteer groups and organizations are needed in meal preparations for breakfasts and dinners. To sign up to help, please visit the Bridge Warming Station's Facebook group or contact United Way of East Central Alabama's Kyle Bryan at kbryan at uweca.org. The warming station opens when temperatures are forecasted to be 36 degrees or below. The shelter also takes into account bad weather conditions such as rain, ensuring the safety and comfort of those who depend on the warming station. This initiative is made possible by the City of Anniston's Community Task Force on Homelessness, led by the United Way of East Central Alabama in collaboration with the Anniston First United Methodist Church, Interfaith Ministries of Calhoun County, Mimi's Heart, and His Hands and Feet Ministries. The City of Ohatchee has issued an advisory for residents in several of its neighborhoods to boil their water before drinking it or using it for cooking. Ohatchee police say there was a water main break, which has now been repaired, but the boiling advisory will be in effect until noon Wednesday. The areas affected are Mohawk Trail, Sunset Cove, Mohawk Court, Mohawk Bluff, and Boulder Point. When we come back, Santa's elves could use a little help providing toys this holiday season. For metal buildings in Alabama and the Southeast, Waldrop Manufacturing is your one-stop source. A Waldrop metal building provides the coverage and protection your investments need. They specialize in carports, RV covers, portable buildings, and storage buildings. Stop paying rent for storage. With Waldrop's price per foot, you can actually save money by buying straight from the manufacturer. Waldrop buildings are guaranteed because Waldrop manufactures buildings with U.S. Steel right here in Calhoun County. Waldrop Manufacturing, serving the entire Southeast. Give them a call today. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by WM Grocery, located in Heflin, Wadawi, Roanoke, and in Piedmont. The Calhoun County Area Chamber and Visitor Center will act as a collection site Friday for the Marines Annual Toys for Tots program. A drive up and drop off area will be set up in the parking lot from 8.30 a.m. until 2.30 p.m. The public is asked to bring new and unwrapped toys to be donated for area children. Participants will be offered holiday cookies and have a chance to have their pictures taken, all without having to get out of their cars. Meanwhile, the Anniston Police Department is continuing its annual Christmas toy drive. The public is being asked to help officers make some little ones smile this holiday season by dropping off toy donations at the Anniston Police Department. That's at 174 West 13th Street. Donations will be accepted through Friday, December 19th. When we return, we'll have some money-saving tips for the coming cold weather of winter. Since 1993, WM Grocery has been a major part of our local community. WM offers the very best in fresh produce and an outstanding meat department. WM also has many local products not found anywhere else and fresh sushi every day. If you need an event catered, come see Mrs. K at any WM store. Curbside pickup is also available for your online grocery orders. Be sure to download the WM app for all the deals of the week and shopper rewards. Go check them out today at any of their locations. We take pride in our community and appreciate your business. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Oxford Lumber. Come visit any of our locations in Oxford, Jacksonville, Talladega, and Roanoke. 
With colder temperatures moving in this weekend, now is a good time to think about ways to save energy and money this winter. The Jacksonville Water Works Gas and Sewer Board has these tips that can help save on your heating bill. Install storm doors to help reduce heating costs. Use ceiling fans in reverse mode to push hot air from the ceiling to the occupied areas of the room. Set your thermostat at 68 degrees or lower during the day and even cooler at night. Dress warmly so that you can lower your thermostat and still be comfortable. Insulate attics, crawl spaces, and unheated basements. Replace old caulk and weather stripping around windows and doors. Open curtains and blinds on sunny days to let in the sun's warmth. Close fireplace dampers after a fire is out. Close garage doors to keep out the cold wind. Have your heating system professionally serviced annually to keep it running efficiently. All these are really good tips because as we know, seasonal change is coming and it's gonna get cold. It certainly is. And there's a lot of things that you really don't think about that kind of sneak up on you. They do. How cold is it gonna get? Oh, well, I don't know, but John Holder does. He joins us now in the EAN Weather Center. John? Mike and Katie, it is going to be very cold tonight. As a matter of fact, we are going down into the low 20s across Calhoun and Cleburne counties. We'll have the complete forecast details next. For over 60 years, Oxford Lumber has been servicing our area and our customer service has always been our main focus. Our customer service is what sets us apart from anyone else. From the moment you enter, our highly trained staff will treat you like family. To enthusiastically provide total customer satisfaction within a positive and self-fulfilling employee relations environment. Visit us at any of our four locations or at OxfordLumber.com. Again today with plenty of sunshine across East Alabama, but cold temperatures despite the sun. Only 52 for the high today. Again, about 10 degrees below the average. 30 for the low this morning. Again, 9 or 10 degrees below the average for this time of year, even for late November here in East Alabama. 78 the record high, 19 the record low, and those days continue to shorten as we head toward the first day of winter time coming up next month in December. The sun rising tomorrow, not until 628, and look at that sunset this afternoon at 436. Weather on your street Tuesday night, taking you out to State Farm Road in Alexandria. Folks, it is going to be very cold in the Alexandria Valley. How cold? 23 for the average low tonight. That will be the coldest night it looks like that we've had so far in this fall and winter season. That will frankly wind up being one of the colder nights that we'll have in the wintertime in Alabama. Sometimes it happens that way where some of the coldest weather happens in November and December instead of January and February. So get ready for a cold night tonight out in Alexandria. Coming up tomorrow, a bit warmer tomorrow. 56 for the high tomorrow afternoon with plenty of sunshine out on Berman Road at McClellan. Again, no rain in the forecast, and you'll see the difference tomorrow as temperatures will be about four or five degrees warmer. And for the rest of the week, we'll have some rain by Friday, probably coming in here late on Thursday night after midnight. Peaceful Valley Road out in Bynum in Western Calhoun County. Get ready for some clouds in here late in the day on Thursday. And as we told you yesterday, temperatures are going to rise from the 50s to the 60s as early as Thursday. We may even see some 70s by the weekend. Once again, as we continue on that weather roller coaster, and here we go out of the station with it. We've got warmer temperatures and more rain coming. Another, another couple of nice days ahead. As we said, 50s tomorrow. We're back in the 60s on Thursday. Clouds moving in late in the day. Cold again tomorrow night. Freezing once again, but not nearly as cold as what we're going to see tonight. Then the rain comes midnight Thursday night to about 12 noon on Friday, perhaps lasting until the early afternoon hours. A 90% chance of rains. We're upping the rain chances. This could be some healthy, beneficial rainfall coming as well with maybe an inch or two of rain coming, as we said, from Friday through the weekend. Very warm temperatures. We rise five more degrees by Friday. 66 for the daytime high. We'll have a bit of a break Friday afternoon and Friday night from the rain. Then more rain coming to the forecast on Saturday, about a 60% chance of rain. Very warm, upper 60s. Look at those nighttime lows rising back into the 
mid 50s. Sunday, another very good chance of rainfall across East Alabama. That high will be 70 degrees. That might not be warm enough. We could be 71, 72 by Sunday afternoon. Look at that nighttime low, almost 60 degrees. That will be warmer than it has been for our daytime highs the last several days. Another good chance of rain on Monday, again with warm temperatures. And then back to more seasonable weather coming up in about a week as all of this clears out of here and temperatures moderate a little bit with highs back into the upper 50s. Let's take a look now at tonight, those low temperatures across north and central Alabama. <laughs> look at this, 21 in Gadsden, 23 degrees in Jasper. It looks like about 25 in Anniston. I think we're going to be a little bit colder than that. All the way down into south Alabama, Troy 27, Eufaula 27, all of these places from west to east, the Mississippi line to the Georgia line, everyone going to be, it looks like, at least in the 20s tonight. We could see freezing temperatures all the way down to the Gulf Coast, all the way down to Mobile and Baldwin counties coming up tonight. Cold night coming up across East Alabama. I'll be back here tomorrow morning. It will be a cold morning. We'll have a cold breakfast and morning forecast for you at 6 a.m. And then we'll be back here tomorrow night for East Alabama local news. We'll have all the updated weather forecasts for you for East Alabama. Right now, with basketball season being here, that brings the cold weather with it. We got a lot of high school basketball to cover. Namath Pitts has the story next. Thanks, John. The Matt Glover era at Piedmont has officially begun, and things could not have started better for Matt Glover and the Piedmont Bulldogs. Piedmont Bulldogs defeated Cedar Bluff last night, 57-41. Colden Proctor and Cole Wilson scored 15 points apiece, and Piedmont again downed Cedar Bluff, 57-41, to open its first season under first-year head coach Matt Glover with a victory. Glover was promoted to replace Jonathan Odom, who stepped back from coaching to follow son and 2023 graduate Alex, who is now playing for the Jacksonville State Gamecocks. Top performers for Piedmont were Colton Proctor with 15 points, Cole Wilson with 15 points, Ishmael Bethel with 10 points, and Dylan Oliver with 9. The Piedmont girls defeated Cedar Bluff 67-19. Ava Pope scored nearly half of Piedmont's points and outscored Cedar Bluff by 10. Again, the top performers for Piedmont were Ava Pope with 29 points and J.C. Glover with 13 points. The Jacksonville boys, well, revenge was sweet for Jacksonville as Aaron Nixon scored 16 points to lead Jacksonville boys to a 53-36 victory over visiting Springville yesterday. Nixon hit two three-pointers and grabbed four rebounds. Other top performers for Jacksonville were Jaquan Irvin with 11 points, Devin Barksdale with 10 points, and Quinn Weaver with 7 points. White Plains shut out Pleasant Valley in the first quarter after leading 13-0. White Plains would then route Pleasant Valley 59-26 as they continued their surging start to the season. The top performers for White Plains were Paul Lobby with 17 points, Josh Wheeler with 10 points, Carter Johnson with 10 points, and Coleman Ray with 7 points. The top performers for the Pleasant Valley Raiders were Bryce Freeman with 8 points and Braxton Williams with 7. The White Plains girls Coach Clay Sprayberry and the White Plains Wildcats led by 20-plus at one point and seemed to be cruising until Pleasant Valley trimmed the lead to within three in the fourth quarter. White Plains would win 59-52, and the top performers for White Plains were Cooper Martin with 13 points, Abby Dickinson with 11 points, and Cassidy Arnold with 11 points. For Pleasant Valley, well, their top performers were Laney Robinson with 15 points, Alexa Cranmer with 13 points, and Lily Robinson with with 12 points. Just like Jacksonville, it was the thunder of Jacksonville Christian who got revenge yesterday as Jacksonville Christian improved a 3-2 on the season by beating Raglan 57-45. The top performers for the thunder were Noah Lee with 26 points, 17 rebounds. Jesse Ganaway had 13 points and 10 rebounds. And Bryson Dowdy had 12 points and 12 rebounds. It was a sweep for Jacksonville Christian, the second meeting between Jacksonville Christian girls and Raglan and it was much closer than the first meeting, but the result was the same. Jacksville Christian won 30-28 to improve to 4-1 with its second victory over Raglan this season. The top performers for Jacksville Christian were Addie Lee with 18 points, 11 rebounds, and 10 steals. Sophie Williams had 5 rebounds and 5 steals, and Katie Beth Hudson had 7 points, 
13 rebounds and two steals. Let's take a look at all the matchups for tonight. There are a lot featuring East Alabama teams. And let's start in Class 6A with Coach Van Meter and the Oxford Yellow Jackets. The Oxford boys are on the road. They make the trip down I-20 and then over southbound as they go to Hoover to face the Bucks. This will be a good one as Coach Van Meter's team is sure to be tested against a really good Hoover Bucks team. Speaking of Oxford, it is the girls also making a trip down I-20, not as far as they'll stop over at Moody. Zayana Whitfield and the Oxford Yellow Jacket girls are on the road facing the Blue Devils of Moody. For the Walter Webber Panthers, it's been a bit of a struggle the past couple seasons. They opened their first game under the Lumpkin era at home as they host Coach Wilson and the Ohatchee Indians. The Ohatchee Indians, again, are going to be at Walter Webber today as those two teams are going to play boys and girls. The Aniston Bulldogs and the Piedmont Bulldogs. It is a battle of Bulldogs. For Coach Glover's team, they're coming off their first win of the season under him. The era started on a positive way, but the competition gets tougher as the Bulldogs of Aniston make their way down, uh, I guess I should say make their way up, as they are going to go and face the Bulldogs of Piedmont at Piedmont. The Donahoe Falcons fell yesterday to the Moody Blue Devils, and today they will make the trip to Talladega to face off against the Alabama School for the Deaf. The Donahoe Falcons are still looking to taste winning on a little bit more level than losing. They will look to get the job done today on the road in Taudiga against the Alabama School for Deaf. This is going to be a sneaky good game. It's the Faith Christian Lions and Pleasant Valley Raiders. Obviously Pleasant Valley coming off a loss to White Plains last night. Faith Christian has played tough competition since the beginning of the season. Coach Hughes' team is going to make the trip to Pleasant Valley to face Coach Hood and the Raiders. This is going to be a good one. Uh, keep an eye on the boys game between Coach Hughes and Coach Hood. That is Faith Christian at Pleasant Valley. Coach Bo Wynn's team and the Weaver Bearcats, Keyshawn Allen, Caden Good make the trip to face Coach Ginn and the Alexandria Valley Cubs. Now this is boys and girls. All these games are boys and girls except Oxford. These are all boys and girls games. So Weaver Bearcats ladies and boys are going to go head to head against Alexandria tonight. We will keep our eyes on this one. This is going to be a good test for the Weaver Bearcats. Jacksville Christian coming off a win over Ragland. They make the trip almost to Georgia. They've already been to Georgia once. They go just before the state line tonight as they face the Bulldogs of Ramburn. So the Jacksville Christian Thunder, uh, Noah Lee and the Thunder have been off to a good start for Coach Tommy Miller. They are headed to Ramburn to face the Bulldogs. And the final game for basketball action tonight is the Cleburne County Tigers. They are hosting Asheville. This is going to be another good, sneaky good game out at Cleburne County. Cleveland County, very underrated basketball program. Keep an eye on the Tigers this season. They host Asheville. It's not just basketball in full swing, though. Tonight marks the first varsity wrestling action in East Alabama. And there are a couple teams right here in Calhoun County that are getting set to compete tonight. And let's start with the first one, which is out at Weaver. Or excuse me, rather, that's Lincoln. Out at Lincoln. This one is going to be where Walter Welburn is going to be on the road in a try, which means there's going to be three teams. So Walter Welburn is going to go to Lincoln. They're going to face the Golden Bears of Lincoln, and they're going to face St. Clair County Saints. Walter Welburn, Ben Carroll's team, heads on the road to Lincoln. Benjamin Russell, the Oxford Yellow Jackets, Coach Rusty Mayfield's team, going to be in a quad tonight at Benjamin Russell. That's going to feature Benjamin Russell, Mountain Brook making the trip from Birmingham, and Russell County as well. So Coach Rusty Mayfield and the Oxford Yellow Jackets are wrestling tonight in a quad at Benjamin Russell. And the final one, I'm going to be there tonight with highlights tomorrow on the show. That is the Weaver Bearcats. At home tonight, hosting the West End Walnut Grove Patriots. And here is a good duel, Weaver and Ohatchee. Ohatchee is a good, good team, only getting better the next two years. Weaver defending state champions back-to-back -back years. Runner-ups the year before, the Weaver Bearcats host West End and Ohatchee tonight. That's it for you and Local Sports. Let's go back over to Mike and Katie. Thank you for that update, Namath, and thank you for watching us today. You can find us here online every weekday on Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram, and on our website, eastalabamanow.com. Just go to our video feed and watch us whenever it's convenient for you. We'll see you back here Wednesday for your news on your schedule.